Why we're here is to celebrate school choice and, ra and raise awareness about the need for educational options. Demi stole a little of my thunder, but the, this is the world's largest annual education-related celebration. It's nonpartisan, nonpolitical, and not advocate for or against legislation. Since 2017, there's going to be 21,000 events in the U.S., 600 in North Carolina almost. School choice in North Carolina. Let me give you a couple of numbers to tell you what, how big this is. It's about 1.5 million public school students. That's about 84% of all students attend public school, the traditional public schools as we talk, because charters are public. There are a number of individual charter schools in North Carolina that are larger than school districts in North Carolina. If they were a school district in themselves, they would be larger than some of the county school districts. As if, think about that, individual charter schools bigger than a school district with superintendent, assistant superintendent, all the staff that goes with it, and they're running as individual schools. There's 90,000 charter school students, 98,000 private home students, 118,000 private school students, 118,000 homeschool students. If charters, if any of those were school district, they would each be the third largest district in North Carolina. There's only two districts larger than that number of people, and that's Wake County and Mecklenburg County. So each of those individual categories <laughs> is bigger than all but the two largest districts in North Carolina. So it kind of gives you a sense of the size of, of school choice and people making decisions other than traditional, uh, traditional public schools. The significant uh, things that have occurred in the last couple of years, the lifting the charter cap, we now have 167 charter schools, passage of opportunity scholarships, and um, the legislation that put into law continuing expansion of opportunity scholarships for the next several years, that's a good thing. Passage of special needs scholarship program. While we have work to do and we must constantly protect the gains we have made, today we are here to celebrate the past and ongoing efforts to expand educational opportunities. With that, I would like to introduce Daryl Allison, the president of PFNC, to come up and take it from here. Daryl? Right. Thank you, Francis. It's a pleasure to, to be joining you here. Well, I think we got some more folks kind of coming in. So team, if y'all can, can have your hand there, make sure we, we get them in here. Good to see you, my friend Marcus Brandon and others. It's, it's so good to see everyone here. Uh, um, we're here celebrating National School Choice Week, and I got to tell you, you know, maybe 10 years ago, what not what much to celebrate here, for the most part here here in North Carolina. But but I got to tell you, uh, and we kind of get into this a little bit later. When you look at the, the most recent years here, uh, North Carolina is not back of the pack, middle of the pack. We're at, we're one of the leading states uh, nationally in, in terms of really moving. Forward. We say school choice, uh, we like to say parental school choice. Uh, I think that's the key that, that we're looking at that, you know, we believe that administrators, uh, policy makers at the state level have their place. Uh, we, we think that, you know, school leaders have their place, but we also want to make sure that we, we have a little bit of room. Uh, we have to pull up another chair uh, to that table of discussion to make sure that parents uh, are educated, but also that they're empowered uh, to be able to be part of that decision-making process for their children. I mean, I think at, at the end of the day, that's what uh, we're getting at. So, so we like to say parental, parental school choice. Uh, that being said, um, uh, I can't think, and I'm about to introduce uh, a, a parent. You know, we can never forget, guys. I know we're here in Raleigh, uh, and I, God bless Raleigh. Uh, this is our state capital. Uh, but, man, we, we've got thousands of other cities uh, in, in North Carolina, 100 counties. And I got to tell you, our organization, uh, uh, we've really been ripping it up uh, across the state here. Uh, we were in Wilmington highlighting a, a powerful school, uh, the first uh, all-girl public charter school in the state of North Carolina, uh, Girls Leadership uh, Academy. They're doing a phenomenal job there in Wilmington, real good, strong community partnership with the University of Wilmington, uh, members on their board, et cetera. So real, real great community support there. From there, guys, we, we, we drove up to, to, to Henderson County and Haywood County. Um, my first time in Haywood, there in the Asheville area. Uh, we highlighted and spotlighted and supported two phenomenal public charter schools uh, that are doing a, a, a tremendous job. One charter school is the second, uh, Lieutenant Governor, second uh, a public charter school there in Henderson County. Uh, and then we stopped by um, uh, the first uh, public charter school in Haywood County, Shining, shining uh, uh, Rock. Uh, classical academy out the first year 
Again, it was on a public charter school in Haywood County, rural, rural area, in their first year. Uh, they came out with a stellar grade of a B. Uh, and, and that's pretty impressive. Those of you who are educators, you know that's, that's, that's pretty significant. Uh, today we're here, and then we're, we're heading out, guys. Listen, we don't stop here in Raleigh. I know that many people think everything ends and begins here in Raleigh, but it's just not the case. We're on our way to Halifax County. Uh, we'll be celebrating and, 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 and uh, highlighting a great uh, school there, and we'll be ending in Bertie County, uh, that, that down eastern part of the state. We've got, we've got work to do, but there's some great work that, that's happening there. All that being said, uh, and again, our, our spotlight uh, is really parents. And so I want to introduce a, a, a young lady, uh, a wife, a mother, uh, who, who kind of got into this uh, as she really thought and examined uh, uh, what her children was, was going to be needing uh, and, and then kind of got in there and got educated, got empowered and as a result of making way for uh, uh, finding a pathway for her own children, uh, she, she became an advocate, uh, literally helping uh, uh, hundreds of others uh, parents. Uh, she's going to come and share her story uh, with us and I guess we'll use this, this podium here uh, is that fine? So we'll kind of clear this out the way here. Uh, she'll share her story and then she has a a uh, real spot, special honor uh, in introducing one of our special guests today. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, uh, Janine Valesti. Janine Valesti, thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Good morning. I'm delighted to be here to celebrate National School Choice Week. My name is Janine Velocity, and my husband and I um, live with our two children, Ocean and Nicholas, in Wake Forest. We are originally from the Chicagoland area and moved here three and a half years ago. One of the reasons we were attracted to North Carolina was because of the educational opportunities for our children. Homeschooling became an option for us as we watched the public schools struggle with providing our son Nicholas with an appropriate education. Nicholas has Down syndrome and needs the flexibility to work at his own pace and not be compared to other children. Homeschooling allows that flexibility to build on a child's strength and support them where they are needed. Having access to the disability grant is vital to parents and makes a tremendous difference. It is so helpful to have the funding to provide tailored curriculum and the flexibility to pick and choose what works best for your child. It allows for related services such as speech and occupational therapy. As a visual learner, Nicholas does not do well sitting at a desk working on uh, worksheets all day. However, given an iPad or a smart device, he's engaged for hours. Having the disability grant puts that option to purchase necessary up-to-date technology for our children in the parents' hands. Our kids are not one size fits all and their education shouldn't be either. Thank you for having me here today. As Daryl mentioned, I do have the honor to introduce our next speaker. Dan Forrest is the 34th Lieutenant Governor of North Carolina. Politics run in his family. The Lieutenant Governor's mother, Sue Myrick, was the former mayor of Charlotte, and she was the U.S. Representative. Lieutenant Governor Forrest is serving in his second term, and he has been a fierce advocate for parental school choice, standing up for public charter schools and state scholarship programs. <coughs> I think I speak for everyone here when I say that we are honored to have a parental school choice champion here with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant Governor Dan Forrest. Thank you. It is, uh, it's an honor to be here with you and uh, to show you how old school I am, but really should say pound old school. <laughs> I, I have kids and every time uh, I say pound something, they're like, what does pound mean? They say, oh, you mean hashtag. I'm like, why do you call it a hashtag? It was, for 50 years, that was pound sign, so it was a hashtag. Uh, but it's, it's an honor to be, to be here with you and thank you for, uh, for all the work that so many of you in this room have done for so long to give parents the opportunity to choose an education uh, for their kids that best suits their kids. And a lot of people will think if uh, you're part of the, the school choice movement that somehow you may be against a traditional public school in some way, and that's not the case at all. The case is saying there are options out there uh, for parents, and parents need to be able to have an option for an excellent education 
uh, for their child or their student. I haven't run across a parent yet that said, I really want to have my child get a lousy education and grow up with no hope and no opportunity in their community. That's, what I'm, that's the community I'm looking for. So all you have to do across North Carolina or any other state in America is you can go and find where the real estate prices are really high and you're gonna find a good school in that area. You're gonna find an opportunity uh, for school choice. That may be in that area, it could be private school, it could be a great public school, the new public school, you know, we know how that works. But the reason that people move into those communities is because they want to have the best option for their kids. And so you go all across the state of North Carolina and you still, still see pockets. We have great, we have great traditional public schools out there. We have some great ones out there doing great work. We have some great charter schools. We have uh, a lot of homeschool students. We have some great private schools. It's a good mix, but parents have the opportunity to make that selection for themselves as to what best fits the needs of their child. Uh, Janine, as a homeschool parent myself, we chose the same thing. We were in a district uh, that had just really horrible traditional public schools. We checked out private school, we couldn't afford it. We church schools, we, we didn't find any that we really wanted to send our kids to at the time. We went through every option we could think of at the time, some uh, 25 years ago or so, and said, you know what, we're gonna try this homeschooling thing. And what we discovered through that whole process was that we have an opportunity that I believe every teacher in America would love to have with the children that they're responsible for in their classroom, is to select the content and curriculum that best suits the needs of that child and to allow them in a competency or mastery-based model to move forward at the pace that they really can move forward. If they can fly through that content, great. If they need to slow down and get a little bit more help, great. If they can have other students come alongside them and help them out, great. Whatever those needs are, and that's where we are in America today. I think we're in this really unique spot in America where all the, the perfect storm, if you will, of education is coming together with, with bandwidth, with online content and curriculum, with school choice options, that we are at a place now uh, where we are going to really be able to put together a true competency-based uh, education system of school choice for our parents and our students out there. And I'm excited about that. And I was in uh, Greensboro, in uh, Guilford County, uh, Gateway Charter School. And we cut the ribbon on Gateway. And Gateway is one of those charters that doesn't fit the typical mold of char charters. It was in a, uh, a poor neighborhood, a neighborhood that had never had a school choice option before, pretty much 100% minority uh, neighborhood. And I walked into that school of fifth graders, and I was greeted by about six or seven fifth graders, and they're all about this tall. And I walk in the front door, and every one of them looks up to me, reaches their hand up and says, hello, Mr. Forrest, thank you for coming to our school today. We're so glad that you joined us here at Gateway Academy. What are you here for? Why did you come to our school? Would you like me to take you on a tour and show you around? These are fifth graders. They're, they're literally this tall, I'm not kidding. They were the most engaging group of students at the beginning of a school year. They were as engaged as they could be. It's huge smiles on their faces. And their parents came up to me after the ceremony and, and with tears in their eyes, literally with tears in their eyes, and said, my kids have never had an opportunity. Our kids in this neighborhood have never had an opportunity before Gateway came along. You know what? I, I, I'm not an emotional guy. My wife says I have one feeling a year, and I use it, I use it sparingly. <laughs> But I teared up. I couldn't help it. I'm sitting there looking at these parents going, this is just unbelievable. And so this is, what, this is really what this is about. And I think we have a great opportunity now. I think, uh, obviously, with all the work, we have a lot of legislators here in this room, with the work that's being done by all the school choice advocates, Daryl, thank you for everything that uh, you've done through the years, and Francis and folks at, uh, at Civitas and others in here that have been uh, just fighting this battle for parents and for kids. Thank you for doing it. We have a great opportunity as we move forward in North Carolina, and I just look forward to uh, working with all of you. So thank you for being champions of this, and we'll keep moving forward. God bless you.